Ever since 1993, with the release of the Super Mario Bros. movie, Hollywood and the movie industry in general has been trying to capitalize on the success of video games and make live-action game movie adaptations. Most of the game movies from the 90s I give a pass because much like older comic book movies, they were still finding their footing. However, after 2000, games were big enough and mainstream enough that studios should have been able to handle them better. Over the years, I've covered everything from Double Dragon to Silent Hill and have often been asked, what does it take to make a good video game movie? It's not really a one-sentence answer. There's quite a few elements, so let me break it down piece by piece. First, and this is a big one, respect for the source material. You need someone in charge that understands the property. This isn't the 1970s. Video games are everywhere, and it shouldn't be that much of a stretch of imagination that someone, either a writer, producer, or director, is familiar with the game beyond just the name. Now, they don't have to know every little tiny detail about it, but a good working knowledge of the subject matter can greatly make a difference. Failing that, bringing in someone from the game company to work as a liaison to help with ideas to mold the film into something both fans and filmgoers will enjoy. In addition to knowledge of the game, it greatly helps if they've actually played the game. I'm not saying they have to be able to speedrun the entire thing or master it in any capacity. What I am saying is that playing the game offers a much more intimate interaction with the material and gives you a greater appreciation for it. I know this should be a given, but I've heard many directors outright dismiss the games they're adapting. For a while, director David O. Russell was working on an adaptation of the Uncharted series. For those who are unfamiliar with the series, it's about Nathan Drake, a treasure hunter who goes on adventures with a journalist named Elena and his mentor, Sully. For the film adaptation, O. Russell said the reason why he wanted to do the film was because of the family dynamic. He liked the series because the characters were like the Sopranos in some ways, that they have great taste and a sense of justice. He then followed it up with how he has a total respect for the game and loves to play it with his kids, but for his version, he wants to create a world that takes it to another level that's more amazing and cinematic. If you've ever played the game, you know that there is no family dynamic, and it already is incredibly cinematic. Also, the mention of him playing this game with his kids is simply a passive-aggressive way of showing that in his mind, this is still something for kids, hence the need to shoehorn in the family element. So if this was to move forward, it would have ended up bearing little resemblance to the property it was based on. Essentially what we have here is, this thing made a lot of money, so we want to use the name to make us a lot of money. Which is the exact reason why so many game adaptations feel like the studio read the back of the box and based the film on that. Thankfully it seems O. Russell has left the production, and as of currently, the movie seems to be dead in the water. Although that was most likely a good move for O. Russell, since he went on to direct American Hustle, and you could say that movie did pretty well. This all culminates in the strange notion that video games are not art, and as such, shouldn't be taken seriously. Before his passing, famous movie critic Roger Ebert claimed video games could never be art. I think a large part of this mindset is due to a generation of people who grew up long before video games are around, and when they think of games, they think of things like asteroids, and not Planescape Torment. They don't see them as having complex storylines with ramifications to the player's actions. They just see kids staring blankly at a screen shooting things. These same people would gladly give awards to the Walking Dead TV series, and not the Walking Dead video game, even though it's been met with worldwide acclaim in the gaming community and has been praised for its incredible storytelling. Look at the difference in superhero movies from just a short while ago to today. While movies like Superman and Batman started the franchises off strong, eventually the studio either lost faith in them, like they did with Superman 4, or they tried to make them too kid-friendly, like Batman Forever or Batman and Robin. Spawn was a brutally violent comic book that should have been rated R, but the film studio insisted it be PG-13, since, of course, only kids read comic books. A movie like Steel was more an attempt to try once again to make Shaquille O'Neal into an actor, instead of a legitimate attempt to do the comic book justice. It wasn't until the 2000 release of the X-Men, which not only won over fans and critics, but was a massive box office hit. The main reason for that was because director Brian Singer read the comics as research and even watched the animated series to familiarize himself with the property. He realized that the story wasn't just about people with superpowers beating each other up, but more about alienation, isolation, and prejudice. Sony hired Sam Raimi to do Spider-Man because he read the books when he was younger and had an extensive knowledge of the character. Now almost all the big budget superhero films have someone from the comic studio on board as a liaison to make sure the characters are being represented the right way so we don't end up with another Batman and Robin. Sure, we still get the occasional X-Men Origins Wolverine or Jonah Hex, but usually that's a typical case of studio interference ruining what could have been a solid product. On to the next point, the story, and how it doesn't have to be the same as the game, but it does need to have the right elements. You can take the basic structure and change or truncate some of the things, but overall, if you stay true to the source, then the movie has a better chance. 
Mortal Kombat didn't follow the story of the first game exactly, but it still made for an incredibly fun movie, because it hit all the right notes. Shang Tsung, an evil sorcerer, has lured fighters from Earthrealm to compete in Mortal Kombat. The movie had plenty of well-choreographed fights, lots of special effects, and even a fair amount of references to the game, such as the locations and the friendship moves. The characters from the movie were almost all based on the characters from the game. They even managed to have a few of the fatalities the series is known for. The only major thing they did wrong was have the film go PG-13 instead of R, but the end result was such a crowd pleaser that even the most hardcore fans were willing to give it a pass. Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li is a perfect example of how to not do a video game movie. The first problem with the movie is that in a game filled with characters, they chose to focus on just one. Say what you will about the 1994 Street Fighter, but at least they had multiple characters with multiple storylines that converged in the end. Chun-Li also skipped that whole fighting tournament, which is kind of the point of the entire series. They did at least hire a Chinese actress, well, half-Chinese actress, Kristen Kriuk, to play Chun-Li. The problem is, she isn't exactly an experienced martial artist, so all her fights were clearly either wire foo or stunt doubles. While Kriuk is kind of well known for her time on Smallville, she's not exactly a household name. So why not go with an actress who genuinely knows how to fight like Zhang Ziyi? She's even full Chinese, so you wouldn't get complaints of the studio trying to whitewash the production. The next thing is it has to be the right property. A movie based on something like Mass Effect makes perfect sense. You have this huge cast of unique characters all wrapped up in this richly constructed universe. If this is done well, then they could have had a monster hit on their hands in a potential trilogy just like the games. World of Warcraft is another one. Watch any of the CGI intros that are just screaming to be made into epic full-length productions. The Warcraft universe has such a wealth of story that it could be easily made into numerous films. Blood Omen, The Legacy of Cain, The Last of Us, The Fallout series, Shadow of the Colossus, Lost Odyssey, Metal Gear Solid. All of these have well-constructed storylines, and the games already play out like movies at times. On the flip side of that are the wrong movies to be greenlit that end up making it difficult for the proper ones. Was it really necessary to make a Need for Speed movie? Look at it from this perspective. Who is the main character in Tomb Raider? Lara Croft. Who is the main character in Splinter Cell? Sam Fisher. Who is the main character in Need for Speed? That's right, the cars. Need for Speed, while a fun game series, some of them anyway, isn't something that leaps to mind when you think of games that need to be made into films. The film was released and not only did it underperform, the critics disliked it as well. For a studio executive, they're not looking at the fact that it was a poorly made film based on a property that doesn't have that much story to begin with. All they see is yet another one of those video game movies that did badly. So the next time someone comes forward with the idea of making a Bioshock, Castlevania, or Dead Space movie, the studio might pass in favor of a safer prospect. It was recently announced that Angry Birds was getting the big screen treatment. And I do recognize that this will most likely make a ton of money regardless of the quality, so I understand why they're doing it, but I still think in the long run it's a bad idea. As ridiculous as that is, I'm sure there's a producer somewhere that's trying to figure out how to get the rights to Candy Crush. They need to adapt the right properties, not just the popular ones. I know plenty of people want a Grand Theft Auto movie, but why? I love Grand Theft Auto, but the game series is already lifted from tons of crime movies and TV shows. Scarface, Carlito's Way, Miami Vice, Taxi Driver, The Italian Job, and Heat, just to name a few. So if they take a game that took from movies and adapt that into a movie, don't you think it might end up feeling a little derivative? They need to go with properties that are distinct. A Halo movie makes sense. Same with Assassin's Creed, that would make for an amazing film if done properly. Fear would be an awesome mix of horror and action in the right hands. The fact that The Sims was optioned to be turned into a movie further goes to show that Hollywood in general has zero understanding of video games. I can't talk about video game movies and not talk about Uwe Boll. While I've come around on the guy and I do think he's finally started making decent films, his video game movies were all disasters and they did massive damage to the reputation of game movies when they were just getting a second chance. He has moved on from game movies after companies realized what he was doing and refused to allow him to buy any more of the rights. The downside is that he managed to crank out 11 video game movies in that time, each of them losing more money than the one before, and all of them awful in their own ways. In summation, what does it take to make a good video game adaptation? The right property mixed with the right people who have a respect for the material and tell a story that stays true to the source. Beyond that, it's the same stuff that's important to any film. A decent budget, a good director, a good cast, and producers that know the difference between keeping things within budget and meddling with the artistic vision of the film. This all seems like it would be a no-brainer, but when a movie like Prince of Persia costs $200 million and is mediocre at best, 
clearly they're doing something wrong. Lastly is the understanding that no matter what you do, no matter how good the film turns out, you won't be able to please everyone. There'll be fans who hate any change you make, no matter how minor, and mainstream audiences that'll refuse to take the movie seriously because of what it's based off of. Don't worry about making it something for everyone. Worry about making it good. Just remember what the brilliant Bill Cosby said. I don't know the key to success, but the key to failure is trying to please everyone. Bottom line, just stick as close as you can to the source, drop anything unnecessary, focus on what makes the game unique, and you should have a hit. Also, never let this guy anywhere near your movie.